Hey, you guys. Flickers of fear time once again. So I think I've talked before, probably on multiple occasions, <laughs> about my ambivalence toward most found footage movies. Like I said, I like, you know, a, a good smattering of them, but it's not usually my go-to genre. So I gotta say, for the life of me, I can't remember <laughs> why exactly I had this particular movie on my radar to review and why exactly like I placed it on my schedule because usually I keep a schedule like I do a schedule about a month in advance. Sometimes I'd shuffle the movies out like if they leave a particular streaming service or something like that. But this had been on there since the beginning of the month. So why did I pick this movie? I can't actually remember. It was probably because a, somebody recommended it, which is possible. Uh, B, it was about the Dyatlov Pass incident, uh, you know, which is a very famous unsolved mystery that we did a show about a really long time ago. I think like back in the episode, like the 20s or something like that. Not in the 1920s, but like in the episode number 20s. And or it was free on a streaming service somewhere. Now, since that third thing turned out not to be the case, I mean, I could have sworn that I saw it free on Tubi or something, but then when I went to watch it, I couldn't find it on there, like under any of its titles. So I ended up actually paying a couple bucks to rent it on Amazon Prime, which whatever, no big deal. Um, so I'm figuring maybe it was one of the first two reasons. Although I did see another video, somebody that reviewed it like a year or two ago, and then they said it was on Tubi, but when they searched for it, they couldn't find it. Like they only found it when they scrolled through, but I was like, ain't no one got time for that. So I was like, I'll just pay $3 and like fucking rent the thing. Now, uh, so even though I c can't really remember like why I chose this movie particularly, um, this was actually a pretty okay like found footage flick. Now it does take a lot of liberties with the true story that inspired it and the CGI effects in it were not awesome, let's put it that way, but it kind of had a neat little twist at the end that actually made me like it more after I watch it, watched it than I did while I was actually watching it, like if that makes any sense. So interestingly, uh, Devil's Pass is not some like cheap jack found footage situation that was made by a bunch of amateurs with cell phones or anything like that. It was actually directed by Rennie Harlan, who, you know, he's not a massive superstar auteur or anything like that, but he does have some kind of big blockbuster movies like under his belt. He did Nightmare on Elm Street 4, for example. He did Die Hard 2. He did uh, Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone. He did Deep Blue Sea, lots of other things like that. Uh, so this movie, Devil's Pass, came out in 2013 and is also known under the alternate title, The Dyatlov Pass Incident. Now, um, I'm actually not sure how much it costs to shoot this movie. Uh, it doesn't really say on Wikipedia, but I will give props to Rennie Harlan for actually filming it, as far as I can determine, uh, in actually northern Russia, uh, n kind of near to where the incident, uh, the actual incident took place, and kind of specifically choosing relatively unknown actors so that the movie would have that much more kind of like verisimilitude, much like the Blair Witch Project, you know what I mean? Um, and because in the context of the story, the characters are actually professional filmmakers who are working on a documentary, uh, the movie is actually shot pretty nicely too. Like there doesn't really, there's not a lot of that real amateurish like shaky cam bullshit that like turns mo turns a lot of people like off the found footage subgenre in general. So there isn't any of that. Well, there is a little bit, but not much. So from what I could glean, uh, it does seem like critical and audience reactions to this movie seem to be like pretty mixed, um, leaning toward the negative. Um, the main sticking points seem to be that, uh, you know, the lack of originality, um, its deviance from the actual mystery that it's based on, uh, the unlikability of the characters, and the outlandishness of the final twist. Now, I will concede to all of these criticisms, and I even agree with them to some extent, but I will say, again, that this is actually like a perfectly watchable film and was actually quite a bit better than a lot of other found footage movies that I've seen. Now, I will say the twist ending is kind of out there for sure, but in spite of that, I actually kind of dug it. Um, though I can totally see why some people might um, think that it was stupid or even maybe uh, disrespectful to the actual people who died in the incident, but I didn't mind it all that much. So I feel like everybody who would actually be watching this uh, would probably already know what the Dyatlov Pass incident is, but in case you don't, I'll just give like a little, little very, very brief summary of what happened. So back in 1959, uh, there was a group of nine very experienced uh, Soviet hikers 
and they died in the northern Ural Mountains under somewhat mysterious circumstances. Like, at some point on the night of February 1st, 1959, the hikers seemed to have cut their way out of their tent and, like, ran out into these sub-zero temperatures, like, in the middle of the night, wearing, like, pretty inadequate uh, clothing, like, for the weather, you know what I mean? Like, they were just in their jammies or whatever. Um, All of them were subsequently found dead. Now, six of them had died of hypothermia, which, you know, is what you would expect. But strangely, uh, the other three were actually found to have died of some kind of physical trauma. Like, one had a busted up skull and, like, one had, like, all this stuff in his chest and things like that. So theories about what killed these hikers uh, range all over the map from, you know, kind of reasonable hypothesis, like it was an avalanche or maybe an animal attack or something like that. Um, Then you got kind of like more conspiratorial stuff, like a military cover up, like maybe they were somewhere they weren't supposed to be, uh, to the kind of like a little bit more incredible or out there like aliens or like attacked by a Yeti or something like that. Although I'm going to come down on the side of uh, there's probably some really mundane explanation like for, you know, why these people died so tragically. Um, The unusual little details about the case have, you know, obviously sparked a lot of people's imaginations for decades since it happened. And the incident is a very popular topic of discussion and speculation like in various weirder unsolved mysteries areas of the internet. So making a fictional film based on the incident seems like pretty inevitable, and I'm sure this isn't the only one. Now, I will note, though, that Devil's Pass isn't technically based on the direct incident itself. In other words, it's not set in 1959, and it's not following the actual hikers who died. It's actually set in the present day. And it centers around, as I mentioned earlier, this small group of filmmakers who are shooting a documentary about the real occurrence and are traveling to the area where it took place in order to kind of like retrace the hikers' footsteps and maybe try to get a handle on what happened to them. So our two main characters are Holly and Jensen, who are co-directing the documentary. Now, Holly seems... I mean, she just basically seems like she's really intrigued by the case as a whole and always has been and is really, really curious to visit the site where it occurred. The somewhat insufferable Jensen is one of those very smug, well-actually motherfuckers who very condescendingly tells Holly everything she knows about the Dyatlov Pass incident is wrong, wrong, wrong. Like, he's watching, like, uh, footage that they shot of, like, some psychologist or something like that was, like, talking about... Uh, you know, maybe what happened there. And he's just like scoffing. That's not right. That's ridiculous and stuff like that. So I will say that even though Jensen does end up being correct, like in the universe of this movie, uh, in any case, uh, that doesn't make his character any less punchable. So the rest of the gang consists of JP and Andy, who are like the expert mountain climbers that they're taking along, and Denise, who is the sound engineer. So after some kind of like brief establishing stuff that's taking place on the college campus, where they all go to college, obviously, uh, and some preliminary footage from that they supposedly shot, like of this documentary that they're making, that kind of gets the audience up to speed on the broad outlines of the actual Dyatlov uh, Pass case, for those that are unfamiliar with it. Uh, After that, like the group heads out to Russia. So the first thing they do when they get there is they go to this mental health facility to talk to the sole surviving member of the original group of hikers. This character, who you only kind of see from afar, like in a window, was based on a real-life guy uh, named Yuri Yudin, and he was actually supposed to accompany the Dyatlov group back in 1959, but he had to opt out, like, pretty shortly into the journey because he had, like, some health issues. Now, in the movie, the filmmakers try to talk to the guy, like, they go to the hospital, but a bunch of orderlies come out and are just like, you can't film here, get away from here, The, the dude's dead, like, piss off, you know what I mean? But as they're leaving, this old man, like, comes to a second floor floor window and, like, holds up this cardboard sign that has something written on it in Russian, um, but none of the filmmakers can actually read it. And then, like, the orderlies kind of, like, drag him away. So, obviously, there's some kind of, like, cover-up or something going on because this is obviously the person that they wanted to talk to and, like, the orderly said that he was dead. So, later on, while they're having a drink in a bar, like, after this kind of disappointing first day that they had, the gang meet this nice fellow named Sergey, who offers them all a ride in his truck, like, to the base of the mountain, since I guess there's, like, no train that goes out there. 
So one of the group actually asks Sergey to translate the phrase that was written on the sign that the old man showed them. And Sergey tells them it means stay away. Not real encouraging, obviously, uh, but the gang decides they're going to forge ahead anyhow. Now, it so happens that Sergey is going to see his elderly aunt, who, coincidentally, not only lives right near to where the filmmakers are going, but was also on the search team who found the original hikers, like, back in 1959. Now, she tells them a very interesting uh, piece of information. She said that she saw 11 bodies, not the official nine, and that the extra two bodies that she saw were kind of situated away from the others, looked very strange, and were accompanied by what she called a machine. Now, remember this little detail for later because it will play into the twist at the end in a somewhat kind of clever way. So once the group get up into the mountains, uh, you get kind of like the expected camping scenes, interpersonal dramas between, you know, some of the characters like hooking up and shit like that, so forth. Most of which that's fine, um, but not really what you paid to see, like to be, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, now to the movie's credit though, um, it weird shit does start happening like pretty quickly. Like one morning, for example, the filmmakers wake up and they find a series of large footprints in the snow made by someone or something uh, uh, walking in bare feet, which, you know, if you weren't aware, is a very unwise thing to be doing when it's like fucking 15 degrees below zero and everything is covered with snow. So Holly, the main person, is kind of like freaked out, but everybody else thinks that she just faked some Yeti shit like for her movie so she could film it, um, even though she's like, uh, duh, I wouldn't do that. But they're just like, yeah, whatever, like tell us another one. So the gang follow these footprints, uh, even though they think they're fake, uh, to this weather station nearby that's been all like kind of torn to hell. And in the weather station, like this little box or whatever, they find an object which appears to be a severed tongue. Possibly human, they're not really sure. There's also the unsettling fact that their GPS devices, which are supposed to be like infallible and which the guy said, I even used this at the Himalayas, like it was fine, uh, but the GPSs are all screwed up and they actually seem to reach the Dyatlov Pass way earlier than should have been possible. And then at some stage, there's like an avalanche that kills one member of the team. And uh, also they kind of get shot at by two guys who just kind of like wander out of nowhere. And later on, two of the gang stumble across what appears to be a hidden door beneath the snow, which leads into kind of like this bunker type situation, which is carved into the mountain. Now, I don't necessarily want to spoil exactly what the explanation for what the original Dyatlov Pass incident is purported to be, at least in the context of this movie. But I will reveal that it involves creatures of some description, uh, as well as kind of like a conspiracy slash science fiction element that name checks the Philadelphia experiment. So if that gives you an idea of like which direction it's heading in, then you know what I mean, if you know what the Philadelphia experiment is. So now some reviewers uh, that I read like thought this plot twist was too far out there, but I actually didn't really mind it. Um, now I will admit that it's really not all that believable. And, and I think that one of the things that kind of hinders the believability somewhat is like the CGI toward the end, like looks so video game like. And I think if it, maybe if it had been better CGI or something like it would have been a little bit more easy to swallow perhaps. But, you know, I'm not going to get too, I'm not going to shit on the movie too hard about that because, I mean, really, it's just like an entertaining flick at the end of the day. It's not meant to be, um, you know, a creepy, like, realistic examination of what actually happened to the real hikers, like, back in the 50s, which would actually probably make a good movie. But if you're going to go that route, you might as well just make a documentary, you know what I'm saying? Um, now, this movie, I'm going to say it's not scary at all. Like, I didn't find it scary. Um, but it, like I said, it does have an interesting premise, um, you know, based on the actual mystery kind of, and after you watch it, you'll probably realize that clues about the resolution were kind of peppered into the film, like all throughout the runtime that you might not have even noticed, like while you were watching it at first. So like only in retrospect does some of the stuff make sense, which like I said, I thought was like pretty clever. 
So, I mean, if you like found footage movies generally and are interested in seeing a story that's somewhat based on a real mysterious case, then, you know, you might get a kick out of it. But don't expect it to be giving you, like, a plausible scenario for what may have actually happened to those people because this is, like, not it. On the other hand, if you don't like found footage, then I'm gonna say that Devil's Pass isn't really, like, original or noteworthy enough to, like, change your mind or, like, say, oh, you should make an exception in this regard. Um, I will admit that it is far better shot than many found footage movies because like I said in the context of the movie it's supposed to be like professionally shot so it doesn't look like all spazzy and shit like that. I mean, it's not, overall, it's not, like, fantastic, but I did have, like, a decent time with it. I thought it was entertaining. It's not boring or anything like that. And the twist at the end, and I always like when this happens, like, the twist at the end kind of made me reassess the film as a whole, and I kind of appreciated it a great deal more, like, after the twist happened, because then I could go back and go, oh, that's what they were talking about with this, that, and the other thing. And like I said, then I kind of went back and, like, I noticed, like, all these little clues that were in there, which I thought was kind of neat. So have you seen Devil's Pass or have you seen another movie, because I'm sure there's more than one, uh, that's based on the Dyatlov Pass incident and what did you think about it or them? Let me know in the comments and that will do it for this Flickers of Fear. I'll see you guys again on the next one. Bye.